So first of all, I work with uh, system dynamics, system dynamic models. As Jane said before, um, yeah, we just try to understand complex systems and aquaponics is very complex. So thousands of parameters we can control or not control or take into account, but you don't want to take into account all these parameters. So uh, this is just an example of uh, system dynamics. It looks very complicated, but actually this is not. Let's start with causal links. We have two kinds of causal links, positive one and negative ones. So for example, more birth lead to high popularity. So you always have and this, if you make a plus there, it's always more leads to more. So a relationship has a positive polarity. That's, that's quite simple. A relationship has a negative polarity. If more leads to less, or less leads to more. So more death lead to a lower popularity. As we see here, popularity is a function of death and birth. We can also make it a, fee a feedback, feedback loop. So we see population here and death here. So we know more death lead to a low population, more birth to a higher one. Um, so if we lose a set of relationships where one var variable leads to another one, and also it might cha change the original um, variable. So we see the higher the population, the more death um, actually we, we're going to have at one point. And this one, there's the delay. So let's say um, in Ethiopia, people die much younger than, for example, an island. So this delay has to be specific to the case. So maybe this is 40 something years in Ethiopia and 70 something in an island. The same as relates to birth. The higher the population, the more birth we can, we can see. But in here, like women are on average 30 years when they get a child, but go to, go to African countries and they're mostly teenagers. So what we see on the left is a balanced loop. The higher the population, the more death we can see, the more death, the lower the population. So this is kind of, this is a, this is a balanced loop. Um, and this one, the right one, is a recirculating one. It keeps on going, like, like we saw before with, uh, for example, animals. So they just keep on going, so exponential growth here as well. If there are enough resources, of course, this is not, this is just, this is hypothetically. But we can take resources into account. So we, we consider a resource constrained poor country, like a very poor country, with no resources. We have, we have, a, we have a population, general population. The higher the population, the, the less resources per person. I mean, th this is logic. The less resources per person, the lower the, the, the life expectancy. Or in this, yeah, that's what you read like this, actually the more, the more. So but this in case the less, the less because resource constraint per country. So there seems to be an observation, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not into social science, whatever, but the lower the life expectancy, then the, the higher the desired family size to make sure that, the, that there are enough children that, that take care of you at some point and that family will go on. So at least this is what I read, but I don't know enough, enough about it, but this seems to be the case. Of course, the higher the family size, the more birth, the more birth, the persons, the more birth in general. Also, the higher the life expectancy, the less death. So, so we, can make, we can make these observations. And what about, what about the, um, the feedback loops? Which, what is this, what's the left one, what's the right one? B or R? Balance or recirculating? So, it's just logical thinking a bit, but it also takes me a while. It's just thinking, yeah, what do you think? R for resources? Um, well, we have, to, we have to make one here for, the, for this loop, for this big loop, and for this big loop. So who would, who would put, what, what would you put here? Is this balanced? This vicious circle, so it goes on and on and on. We get, we get l less and less resources and people still make more and more children. This is a causal loop diagram so we can, um, we can actually see what's connected to, which variables are connected to how. But it doesn't take any, any mathematical thinkings in, into consideration. So we have to identify stocks and flows. It's just like think of financial things, you know? You have like, you have a pot of money, money goes in, money goes out. But there might be, the reason why money goes in or goes out might be lots of variables behind. So maybe someone blackmails you, you know? Money goes out. Maybe you, you win the lottery, money goes in. 
but the chances are very low. But you have general income, you have general, you have general expenses. So you can see we have a stock of, stock of capital, flow of new investment, appreciation or depletion if, if you're in a business. So you always have to think in stocks and flows. For example, let's take the fish tank, okay? Something very simple, fish tank, same. You can, you can think in, in stocks as the fish tank, the fish in the, in the tank and the flows is fish in, fish out. Now we have, we have this CLD, these cause loops. What is the stock in our case? Something which is tangible, which you can count. Resource per person. Yes, you can kind of make it a stock, but that's like, I would do it rather as whole resources, as resources available. But clearly, population. Population is a stock, right? I mean, these are the amount of people which can increase, decrease. And the, the flows are the birth and the death. So if the population as a stock, in this case identified as a stock, if the birth, new people getting into the population, and death, people out of there. And the other are variables which, which, which might cause or have an effect on these flows. So in aquaculture we have a stock, it's the fish, and we have, we have the flows, added fingerlings and harvested fish. As soon as they get a specific size, we have some variables here which say, okay, that many days, etc., which which affect the outflow of the stock. And here we can determine, for example, the size of the fingerlings getting in there, which then again determines after how many days they get out. But this is this is the flow. There's a flow in this stock. So what, what what is missing there if you want to if you want to make an agriculture model? Like there's one more floor maybe flow maybe getting out. Yeah? Yeah, mortality in this case. To make an aquaponic CLD, <laughs> once get a try. I mean, like, this is <laughs> lots of variables. And this is just one of system. I mean, this is like the simple one without any, any crazy uh, rectors behind. This is just a one loop system, a simple one loop system. But we have so many variables. Taking them all into account just makes the big mess. As James said, you just want to, you want, want to pick, you want to pick variables and you want to pick parameters which really fit into your model to, so you can explain things and show things, determine things. So that can be simplified. I simplified it in that, this way. It's, it's very much simplified. I mean, <laughs> so you will not get, you'll not get this model to, to play with, but a bit easier, I guess. But because what, what, what I have here, this is, like an, this is like an agent, this is a whole agent. So this is an agent for one fish tank. So I want to, of course, know the cycle of delays for each fish tank. Just imagine I have, um, okay, let's say the fish would be grown up after 100 days. It, it never happens, but um, I would have 100 days and uh, I want to have four fish tanks. And I want to balance the nutrient inflow, which means the feeding rate. Um, I want to balance it as, as, as good possible. So I would have four tanks divided by the total, the total days of cycle. So I would have a cycle delay of 25, 50 or 75 days for the other tanks, which are agents within my model. So um, I'll leave this all out for you, but, but this, is, this is actually uh, yeah, a causal loop for just the growth of the fish. And I do not take lots of parameters into account. If you, if you check the CLD, um, if you check the CLD, I take into account the pH, um, the EC even, uh, temperature, etc. And I think even calcium, magnesium uh, and aluminum ratios. But uh, here I, 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 just, I just think about the water temperature, just the most determined factor. And we just assume that the pH is, is in good levels. I mean, that's, that's how we simplify models. That's how I did it. And the rest is just... Uh, from literature, fish growth models, and plus 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 own data. And we can also see. I, I just calculate here the final weight of the fish, and uh, I, I calculate after how many days I have to harvest it. So all these connections look super complicated, but just simple mathematical formulas.
it's, it's, about the, it's about the flows here. The same applies to the, to the hydroponic model. So, I mean, nutrient uptake is super complicated, super complex. I'm not, I'm not a plant scientist, but I got into the literature very deep to, to at least figure out um, the nutrient uptake of, of lettuce. So I ended up having lots of different data. And what I finally took was just like my own data from my experiments to see how many nitrate they took up after, after X days. So, um, um, yeah. And here I also integrated the uh, ever transpiration of the plants, general and crop specific. So I can actually, ta I can actually tell the, the, uh, the water which is ever transpirating. And the nice thing with any logic is actually, it doesn't only do system dynamic modeling, what you can see here is like the little sign for what I'm doing. You can also include agent, agents like I did with the, with the fish tanks and discrete events. For example, what I do, what I do here, this for example, discrete um, event. So I say, for example, I, I think this is what, I, what I'm trying to say. I, I say the lettuce only takes up nutrients if there's, or nitrate if there's nitrate available. <laughs> Otherwise the model goes into, into minus something, minus infinite. So, so I have discrete events for that. Yeah, and um, what you are going to do the next day or today and later, so you're going you're gonna to make a CLD for um, biofiltration sizing. Exciting, you can actually use it for your own um, ROS systems. And for that I will uh, run a video for you or found on YouTube. Just, just showing um, the kind of bifurcation we will um, uh, run mouse. That's great. It will um, it'll design. This is our moving head bioreactor, biological filter. This is the next treatment step after solid removal with the drum filter. So the water is coming in from the drum filter, from the tank. Uh, comes through two chambers here. In this particular unit, we have three chambers. This unit is built of concrete block, and it has a, uh, um, a potable water paint on the inside, the waterproofing. It is relatively shallow. It's about 1.2 meters deep. Uh, it uses the uh, another product that we have, the bio walls, or the fiberglass dividers between the two stages here actually three stages because we have two stages of the biofilter and then the third stage is the pumping sump. That's where the, uh, the water travels through the first stage. Uh, we get biological filtration there as we do in the second stage. You also see the uh, media moving. It's kept vigorously moving by um, air, aeration. This is to release carbon dioxide, to strip out carbon dioxide gas from the water. Also, it does uh, uh, further aeration because the uh, bacteria that inhabit a biological filter are aerobic bacteria. They require oxygen for their processes. So we're getting reduction of the ammonia, oxidation of the ammonia from ammonia to nitrite, and oxidation of the nitrite to nitrate in this process. Going through the two chambers, finally to the pumping sump, and it's pumped back to the uh, back to the tank, oxygenated and pumped back to the tank. Moving bed bioreactor. What, what, what you're going to do is size, size the biofiltration MBBR. Who uses MBBR here? Great. So um, actually, for the performance, the, the op optimum performance should be around 29 degrees, 27 degrees Celsius. You don't always have it, but like the, the, like the, um, Efficiency is a bit, a bit lower if it's, if it's, I think 20 degrees also fine. Um, the pH, the optimum is between 7 and 9, is quite, quite high, but also we don't take that into consideration. If you, if you make the PHD, uh, the, uh, the CLD, if you make the CLD, you can of course write it in there and just write the dependencies later for the model. We just leave it out. Uh, oxygen must always be maintained. And of course the sizing base is based on feet um, composition and amount. Um, so for MBBR sizing, this is actually the data you need. 